Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris. I'm coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church, and this is a word of encouragement from PC Studios. It is May the 10th, 2022. How in the world are you doing today? I hope you're blessed and highly favored by God. Hey, um, listen, I, yesterday I was on, I was traveling, I had to go get an MRI on my shoulder. Uh, some of you may not know, but I uh, got some serious issues. I'm um, probably going to have to get surgery, rotator cuff surgery. So they did an MRI to see how extensive it was. Um, so anyway, I was up there and I was in, I was in the line for Chick-fil-A and I was having my little word of, word of encouragement talk, not realizing I was doing it through my cell phone. Somehow, uh, Streamlabs, um, the volume somehow did not go through. So I apologize. I was on there blabbing my lips and had a short little discussion with y'all for about five minutes and nobody could hear a single word, unless you're a lip reader. So anyway, today I'm glad you're with me. I hope you're here. We're going to pick back up where we left off uh, this past Sunday, which was Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day again. We honor what's the importance of mothers is what I'm going to talk about today. And I think I connected the importance of mothers with society and how mothers can influence our homes, our church, our community, our society, our culture. And so we want to see moms uh, influencing the home, the church, you know, the, the community, the culture, we need mothers to be doing those things. And so I pray, I pray that we will and we will be found faithful to those things. So uh, anyway, welcome to the program. If you want to be live, you need to be live with us right now at the noon hour at uh, facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. If not, you can be on one of the channels, YouTube channels or Facebook channels or Twitch at any time. And thank you again, whether you're live with us now or you're watching us at a later time. So Looking specifically at uh, this, uh, the importance of mothers. Uh, one, I want to thank mothers for out there, those of you that are godly women. We looked at Proverbs uh, 31, and we want to see godly women in our lives. So the 31 chapter, 30, the 31st chapter of Proverbs is kind of about this ideal godly woman, this, the, what, what, what womanhood is and what motherhood is. Um, I mean, if you could really think of how the scriptures portray that, it's found in this text. So, But I want to focus just on one verse that I focused on Sunday, which is the 28th uh, verse, and it says, Her children will rise up and call her blessed, and her husband will praise her. So a godly woman will be praised by her husband, and a godly woman will be called blessed or blessed by her children. Um. Now, whether you have children or not, uh, a godly woman is worthy of praise. And that's what I want you to hear. It's not just talking necessarily about womanhood or, or motherhood, but womanhood. I really believe this. A godly woman has great influence. So I know we live in a day and time, I think, where things get confusing, where there is feminism and there is good movement. There's good. So I start. Let me back up. We've talked about cultural movements Sunday, and I'm going to talk about that with, with womanhood. And today, specifically, something I didn't really touch on much, but just glossed over, was feminism. The feministic movement of our society has some good things to it, but also has some very bad things to it. And so when we think of feminism, it usually, to me, it's a bad thing. I think it actually erodes on what true womanhood is and motherhood is. And I'll give you an example that maybe should be used more than it is being used right now. And that is um, when we look at right now in our culture today, right now today, um, if you didn't know, there's, this, there's the leak in the Supreme Court over Roe v. Wade. And, and it seems highly likely, uh, it's not been denied, that Roe v. Wade will be overturned and turned back to the states. Now, Maryland, unfortunately, is a state that has abortion rights and is pretty extreme. Um, so the battle would begin in the state. For the first time in my lifetime, that could be a possibility where we fight these battles at the state level and the federal government finally gets it right and stops the Holocaust or attempts to stop the Holocaust. That's because that's my view of abortion. So with that, though, Roe v. Wade, so President Biden is all in arms about this, and there are organizations that revolted this past Sunday. They, 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 uh, they were protesting outside of Supreme Court justices' homes, the conservative ones, they were protesting evangelical churches and Catholic churches. Now, I don't know how widespread that was, but there was some activity in those areas. 
Um, I did receive emails preparing me saying, hey, this could happen in your area. We hope not. And so those things happen. But at the same time, this Roe v. Wade thing's going on, which I think is an assault on womanhood. You had baby formula. If you've not heard this yet, there's a baby formula one recall, but there's also a baby formula shortage. There, there's a grave concern that mothers won't be able to feed their babies if they can't breastfeed. This, this is legit, you all. This is not being made up. So wouldn't you think our administration would be more concerned with bringing life to babies that we already have and making sure we have formula versus fighting for mothers that want to kill their babies? I want you to just think about that. We have some in our culture, some in our society, some political ideologies that would rather kill a baby than save a baby. That's not womanhood. A woman is going to say, I want formula for my baby. I want to feed my baby. I want to protect my baby. I want my life, the, my, my babies to live. And so abortion screams against that. But that's the culture we're living in. So women, why am I bringing this up? Not to get into the abortion debate or any of that, any of that stuff today. Man, how our priorities are so messed up. Proverbs 31 gets our priorities straight for women. Uh, women is not about sexuality. It's not about womanhood. It's not about that. It's not about, uh, you know, it is about women's rights and that we want women to be treated with equality and dignity and, 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 and be able to get educated and, and work in the workforce. Amen to all that stuff. But not emasculating men. Womanhood never emas... In fact, it says she's praised by her husband. A woman that honors a man is praised by her husband. A woman who honors masculinity and femininity as God defines it is rise, their children rise up and bless her. So there's a difference between culture and the church. There's a difference between the ideology of the world and the ideology of the Bible. And I'm going to always go with the Bible, you all. Women are women and men are women. And, and, and men, are men. men are men. So you have woman and man. You have male and female. You have biological difference. You have physical, right? You have spiritually, we're all, listen, it says there's no male or female spiritually, right? We all can have access to God. He loves us equally. We may be physically different biologically. The capabilities, our roles may be different and how we live our lives, but spiritually, we have equal access to God the Father. And there is no, there's no Jew or Gentile or male or female or free or slave when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to, when it comes to our relationship with God. So I want to say this to everyone out there. Women, you're important. Womanhood is important. Motherhood is important. The godly woman is important, and we need godly women in our society. And I want to encourage you today, women. Man, you have a pastor. I'm in your corner. I love you. I, I, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for godly women in my life, and I want to see more godly women in our church, and I want to see women that, that honor God's ways, and they help us men become who we're really called to be in Christ and other women to become who they are in Christ to mentor young women into becoming godly women. And, and this whole thing about mamas don't let your babies grow up to be woke. We don't want woke society influencing what dictates who we are. Women, you are women. Woke would say a woman can be a man or, or there's no such thing as gender or who cares about marriage and marriage can, you know, if you want to love another woman, loves another woman. That they, they say that's okay, but God's word says, listen, no. You're made in the image of God. Genesis 1.27. Genesis 2.24. It says that God created his male and female and that a man shall leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, and the two flesh shall become one. So the Bible defines for us humanity, gender, and marriage. All in, 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 in less than you know, one chapter of Scripture. From the very beginning, in the beginning, God already laid that all out for us. And then we get to Proverbs 31. Whoever, if Solomon, let's say it is Solomon that wrote all of them. If he, it is, I'm not sure, 100%. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. 
But the proverbial text is this. Listen, children will rise up and call her blessed, and her husband will praise her. That is true womanhood. That is truly what motherhood is about. That, so women of God out there that are listening to me today, I appreciate you, I applaud you, I honor you, I want you to be blessed, and I want you to be praised. And I want you to be worthy of those things because you're living as God has called you to live according to the scriptures. You don't need the world to tell you how to live. You need the word to tell you how to live. You don't need the world to redefine your gender. You know you're either female or you're male. You don't need the world to redefine marriage. You know what marriage is. One man, one woman, intended for life, that the two flesh will become one. You don't need the world to tell you to identify these things. We know it deep in our heart. Sin has distorted so much, but God's word gets it right. So if you're out there and you're a woman today, or you're a man, listen, listen, men. If there are godly women in your life, praise them and be grateful. And children, uh, not, I don't think there's children really watching this, but children, if you're out there, teenagers, if you're out there, man, if you've got a godly mother, you need to be grateful. Blessed are you. And maybe the deck's not been stacked in your, in, in your corner. Maybe you didn't have those godly influences in your life. Then you be the change. You be the godly mother or godly grandmother. You be the one that says, look, I didn't have that in my life, but I'm going to have it now. And I'm going to be that Proverbs woman. I'm going to be that lady that honors God, that her children bless her, and that her husband praises her. Have that desire in your heart. doesn't mean you're approved. doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means you're godly. It means you love the Lord. It means you love your children. It means you love your husband, and you want to honor God's ways in your life, in your relationships. Hey, man, if we're doing that, that's a beautiful thing. So I hope that you uh, will have that experience. And women, I, once again, I just want to, I want to lift you up today, and I want to thank you. Those women that are in my church, that are in my life, that are living for God, I am so grateful. You make me a better man. And I think that's the beauty. Men of God made, make women better women. And women of God make men better men. And that's what we need. When women are doing godly things and men are doing godly things, we make each other better, male and female. And we make our marriages better. We make our home lives better. We have better children. We have a better church. We have a better community. And we have a better culture. And I really think, women, you have that much power. You have that much influence. When you do things God's ways, it influences and changes things. I realize our culture and our society and our world is going to like press against godliness and holiness and righteousness of doing things God's way. But it's always best to follow God's ways. So thank you, women. I salute you today. And I just want to shout out to you. Remember these two realities? that God loves you, and so do I. And I'll see you here tomorrow, and we'll continue this conversation on what it means to be a godly woman. God bless you.